John Oliver, who is a comedian on Comedy Central, uh, who used to work for John Stewart, uh, on his show last week tonight, I think that's what it's called, um, he had a segment about Donald Trump. This segment was pretty much ripping Donald Trump apart piece by piece, taking apart his whole fucking life and everything that he's ever done. I'm talking about all the shitty business deals he's done, um, all the times he's lied, his flip-flopping, the fact that he's just not consistent about anything that he believes. He just sort of makes it up as he goes along. Um, John Oliver sort of shredded this apart. And then he just... Well, this is total fucking spoilers, by the way. He discovered that once upon a time, his family wasn't called Trump. It was called Drumpf. So then he made a hashtag make uh, Donald Drumpf again because he wants to take the power out of the Trump name and turn it into a piece of shit because I guess that's what Donald Trump deserves because he's like a borderline fascist, racist, piece of shit, garbage, stupid hair, dumb orange troll, um, just without the appeal of the toys. Wait, no, the toys didn't have appeal. Well, they did a few at 12, whatever. So anyways, two YouTubers made different videos about it. Well, one YouTuber made a video, another YouTuber reacted. Sargon of a card made a video basically flipping out about this joke. He took it very fucking seriously. And he had a lot of outrage, which I think is kind of ironic because he's supposed to be a guy who's always making fun of like feminists and other people for taking things too seriously. And he took this fucking seriously. He just was like, I have to make a video about this. I gotta talk about this Trump thing. This thing's driving me insane. What are you thinking, you fucking comedian? You're not a comedian, you're an activist. He lost his shit, which is ironic. Um, considering what he does, but I watched his video and then Kevin Logan, a uh, feminist YouTuber, he made a reaction to Sargon's video. And the weird thing about it is I find myself between Sargon and Kevin. That doesn't sound good. That's a nightmare scenario. But anyways, while I think that Sargon took this segment way too seriously because it is a comedian, I really felt like he had a point when he said it was like activism because John Oliver's show is a slightly different format than The Daily Show. The Daily Show pioneered taking apart politicians piece by piece, taking apart news stories, finding out everything about them that was dishonest and then making fun of them and having an overarching theme. But the John Oliver uh, show is more like a essay format where he just has one subject that he just covers uh, in great detail and when you choose just one politician to do it about and you go through the entire politician's life and tear them apart and then you end up by having a hashtag um, selling hats that have this theme on it um, creating a, a program for your browser which can change the name Trump to Drumpf in order to humiliate Donald Trump I think that is activism basically and I, I think Saigon was right about it. I don't share his outrage about it being activism. I don't think comedians are never allowed to express activism. And I think as a liberal comedian, John Oliver probably thinks, you know, I don't want Donald Trump in power because he kind of stands against all the things I believe in. So I'm going to take this opportunity to jab at him. Do I believe that his activism was supposed to be a solution to Donald Trump? No. Sargon definitely read into it way too much. He's like, John Oliver is doing everything he can to destroy Trump, but it's not going to work, so we're doomed. Well, we're not relying on John Oliver. He's a comedian. But he's just doing his part. He's doing what he can. Um, he's a big platform, and I think doing something works better than not doing something just by definition. Like, what do you want him to do, Sargon? Maybe you should fucking write him a letter and explain exactly how he should take down Donald Trump for the sake of America, you know? And then John Oliver can ride in on his pony, or his, like, Shetland... Shetland pony? I don't know what the fuck they ride around on in England. Just weird little beast creatures. He can ride in on that and slay the dragon, and then everyone will be like, good job, John Oliver. That's not his fucking job, he's just a comedian, so Sargon takes it way too fucking seriously. But besides that, yes, I think it was activism. Um, I, think, I don't know, Kevin maybe downplayed that a little in his video, but he's got his own take on it, you know. And I also wanted to talk about Donald Trump himself. Everyone has, like, different opinions as to why Donald Trump is so strong, but I'm pretty sure that it's just his strength. And by that, I mean he's completely unapologetic about everything. 
that used to be Chris Christie. Chris Christie used to be the guy you could go to who would just um, tell it to you straight. But he literally destroyed his chances. Can you literally destroy a chance? I'm going to say that's the right use of literally. No one correct me. He literally destroyed his chances when he hugged Barack Obama. Uh, everyone talks about Bridgegate. Now, before that, it got destroyed because he hugged Obama. That's all you have to do. You just have to, like, hug Obama. You're fucked. Um, even Donald Trump probably wouldn't have survived touching Obama. He's that toxic. So after he hugged Obama, he was fucked. And then they needed another person who was unapologetic about everything. And then eventually they found... Well, he found them. Donald Trump came along and now everybody is trying to give him shit about his flip-flopping and it's not going to work. And the reason that he is Teflon is because he does not apologize for anything he thinks, even if it's completely against what other Republicans could get away with. For example, he said, Planned Parenthood does a lot of great things. Lots of great things for many, many women. And I care about healthcare and... I don't like the abortion thing, but it does a lot of great things. Now, for any other politician, that would be a death knell. And they would spend the rest of their campaign getting bugged about it by reporters and trying to explain it away. George, Jeb Bush spent most of his campaign trying to explain gaffes and just account for things and, like, apologize. Um, Donald Trump doesn't apologize for it. A different candidate, when asked about it, would be like, I, I know I said the thing about Planned Parenthood, but, you know, I do think that they do some good things. Um, we are, we're going to look at the abortion thing, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. You know, my record on these issues has been very strong, and I've been a very good pro-life candidate, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't fucking work. Everyone's just like, this guy's a pussy, basically. Donald Trump doesn't do that. He says... Planned Parenthood, you know, helps a lot of women. Helps a lot of women. It's done some fabulous work, some great stuff. Really great. And, you know, women, I love women. I love women's health. Uh, fantastic. It's great. But the abortion thing, yeah, we'll fix that. We'll deal with that. But it does great stuff. Someone brings it up again. He says the same thing. He's just like, yeah, Planned Parenthood does fantastic work and I care about women's health. And then by the seventh time he said that, no one can even remember that it's a gaffe anymore. They're just like, oh yeah, Donald Trump thinks that. And they don't even remember that it's against the entire orthodoxy of their party. It doesn't matter how many times other people bring it up. If he just keeps bringing it up, eventually people are like, that's reasonable. You know, and eventually he will change the minds of the party to be like, George Bush's Iraq idea was bad. He just needs to keep saying it. And that's the strength thing. If you never back down, never acknowledge new facts, even when people call him up about the shit he did in the past, he's just, I've changed. It's different now. And they're, they're going to be like, are you going to apologize for that? No, nah, it was years ago. When did you change your mind? Yeah, recently. I just changed my mind. <laughs> no details, no information. That's, that's all you need to do. And these fucking politicians overthink it. Just be like Trump. Uh, he is, he's Teflon Trump. When you don't have any values or any morals, you can say anything you fucking feel like. He could just change the whole dogma of the Republican Party. Some people were like, he's lost it, he's done. When he said, I prefer war heroes who aren't captured. When he was talking about John McCain. Nah, you know, he's not the greatest war hero. I've seen better. <laughs> uh, people are like, you can't do that. You can't disrespect a war hero. But he just shrugged it off. Everyone kept whining about it. And he's like, oh, it was just what, how I felt about it. It's just... That was my thoughts about it. Other politicians would be like, well, you know, John McCain is great and he's not too, you know, I didn't mean it in that way. And uh, there was some context and stuff. Donald Trump's like, I don't give a fuck. You know, that's why he's winning. Finally, people ask what will stop Donald Trump. And there's only one answer at this point, And that's the general electorate uh, in America. In the general election, it's going to be a much different equation and the only way that I think he could really win will be if the Democratic candidate fucks up or really screws it up. If they keep going the same strength that they are right now, um, I think Donald Trump will lose. And you got to remember, he's got very high unfavorable ratings. He's one of the most unfavorably rated politicians ever. That shows you that um, how he's doing right now is just reflecting Republican voters. 
Republican voters love it. They love the strength. They love the racism. They love the bigotry. They love the anger. They love never backing down. They love just, like, sticking it to liberal pussies. That's another weird-sounding phrase. And that's why Trump seems unstoppable right now. But the moment he hits the general, those unfavorables are going to hit him like a ton of bricks. Just like, ah, unfavorables! And then we will see the real picture of what people actually think of Donald Trump. And, of course, all this is going to be dependent on things like voter turnout and how well the Democratic candidate does. But I'm predicting that it's unlikely he will become president um, because the obstacles and the hurdles in the general election will probably be too much for him to overcome. Everything's distorted in a primary, but there is a chance. And if there is a chance, maybe we need more John Oliver's making more Donald Trump's and releasing more hats and creating more hashtags. Uh, unless you just want to have a Donald Trump because you hate the Muslims, you hate the Mexicans, you want to make America great again, you want a big ass wall, and Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah. He hit me. Hero. He's not a war He's hero. A war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Asked about McCain, you got into his war record, and I think you would admit here tonight that was a mistake. Cheryl Atkinson analyzed what I said. She took it all the way, and she included a few minutes later at a news conference, which everybody goes to immediately, and she looked at it and she said, Trump did absolutely nothing wrong. He said the right things. But millions and millions of women, cervical cancer, breast cancer, are helped by Planned Parenthood. So you can say whatever you want, but they have millions of women going through Planned Parenthood that are helped greatly. And I wouldn't fund it. I would defund it because of the abortion factor, which they say is 3%. I don't know what percentage it is. They say it's 3%, but I would defund it because I'm pro-life. But millions of women are helped by Planned Parenthood. The war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? Now, you can take it any way you want, and it took Je it took Jeb Bush, if you remember, at the beginning of his announcement, when he announced for president, took him five days. He went back. It was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It took him five days before his people told him what to say, and he ultimately said it was a mistake. One statement you made, I I'm really having trouble getting over, okay. frankly, and I want to ask you about it. Sure. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was watching the debate and you made this statement, I had to apologize to my children for the words that came out of my mouth. When you said that George W. Bush, which was our last Republican president, that, that he lied to get us in the war in Iraq, that, that, that stung me very deeply. Well, a lot of people agree with what I said, and if, I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about not lying. Nobody really knows why we went into Iraq. Uh, the Iraqis did not knock down. It was not Saddam Hussein that knocked down the World Trade Center. Okay, what, that's just been, what you said was they lied. They said there were weapons mass destruction, and there were none, and they knew there were none. There were no weapons mass destruction. Well, there are a lot of people that think that. There were a lot of people that think, look, bottom line, there were no weapons of mass destruction. They said there are weapons of mass destruction. I was so, against so the war think, when it started. Do you think...